Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch League 2019 season. I am Achilles coming out on the cast alongside a wolf for the New York Excelsior going up against the Houston Outlaws. Houston just able to pick up a win against Spark, who we just saw take a loss to the London Spitfire. Seemed like they're resurging, but the question is, Outlaws, can they keep that momentum rolling? Can they take down New York today? That's the big question. I mean, Houston has shown such a depth of strategy, and I think one of the big parts of this is Jake, he's got a massive hero pool, you know, he was considered in the inaugural season to be kind of a, you know, junk rat main, right? Bit of a one-trick tracer, but this season he's playing the Fara, the Brigida, he's played the Sombra, and he's keeping this roster together. This win was a huge turnaround for the Outlaws. I mean, they really smashed Hangzhou Spurk, and I know Hangzhou just lost a lot in Spitfire, so it feels a little bit less impressive, uh, you know, at this exact moment in time, right? But I think it was really good leadership, such diverse compositions we've seen from them that's led them to those victories. Yeah, not only that, but also just the shot calling, getting that wrap around on the Spark support line, shattering them back towards the drop ship. It was just beautifully done overall by the Outlaws. We'll see if they can pull anything like that off against New York Excels. You're going to be a little bit tougher, you would expect, because NY have been looking very, very strong here at the start of the season, racking up those wins to kick things off. And really, it's on the back of that tank line. Yeah, I mean, you talk about shatters. Mono has hit several big shatters to lead into Mecco self-destructs. This tank line together, it's a, I mean, look at this. You see the shatter come through. Mecco's bomb timings here, always correct. This is the big one on Rialto. I talked about it in the Watchpoint pre-show today. But this is probably the best duo we have in Overwatch League right now in setting up these combos. And I think we're going to see more of that in this series today. Well, we're also about to see more of the New York Excelsior, not just the tank line. Let's go ahead and give them a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the New York Excelsior. This team last season pinned as one of the teams everyone was saying they've got to be in the grand finals. There's no way they'll make it a dominant season. Leading up until stage four, things started to fall apart. But so far, here in the 2019 season, they have looked strong. Their strengths, we don't know what really is going on with Hitscan right now. We're not seeing that in this meta, but the core of this roster still looks strong in a new meta. You've still got Jonak killing it. You've got Mono and Mecco. And with the Nene coming into this roster to kind of glue it all together with a great Zarya play, New York Excelsior look as strong as ever here in stage one. That they do. Well, let's go ahead and give an equally as warm welcome to their opponents today, the Houston Outlaws. It's been a bit of a rocky start for the Outlaws, but I do feel that they have shown a lot of improvement in their last few matches. And it's all about the flexibility. They've shown more comps really than most other teams right now, whether it's the Fara, whether it's the Sombra, the regular 3-3. They pretty much pulled a little bit of everything out here. Reaper attempted as well. So much to talk about with this roster at the moment. Yeah, and of course the Widowmaker we had to keep in the back of our heads. If Linkser does show up here today, this will be the starting six, however. So Jake, Gonna be making those big brain shot calls during the match and see if we can deliver some success here to the Outlaws. Yeah. Rock has been, I think, well, on the forefront of a lot of criticism for the squad, but his stats actually uh, are not bad. His stats are, you know, about average at the moment on Zenyatta. So I, I think that if this team is to beat NYXL, it's to do it through strategic depth again, because NYXL has been so reliant on that 3-3 and the old combos there. Certainly anything could happen here if Houston has another performance like they did against the Spark. And I know they've got strategies planned, even though they've had multiple matches this week. Tyrong and the coaching staff has certainly created a big list of tools they can utilize. Well, talking about the Zenyatta stats on the side of the Outlaws. You're going up against the ultimate Zenyatta in Chonak. We've got a couple other faces rising to the occasion right now through some of our expansion teams. Twilight looking like a bit of a standout yesterday. We're going to be seeing a little bit more of him in our final series today. But if Rockus, if they can take down Jonak in that 1v1 with the Zenyatta, that'd be absolutely huge. But ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at the map set presented by Toyota and see where we're going. Nepal will kick us off on control, then Hollywood followed by Anubis. Good map for Outlaws. Don't think uh, they're going to fall into that same trap, though. And we're going to round things out on Route 66. Not as good of a map uh, for them, historically, the Route 66. So we'll see how this one shakes up 
the big matchup here, I feel, is really going to be between the tanks of these two rosters. Can Mono actually bully this squad? Can he flank? Can he make the shatters happen? Can he charge? You know, into the other side to set up for those explosions. Because a lot of time you think shatter into self-destruct, but often it's actually just charging the enemy Ryan so the shield is knocked down. And it's very easy to time that if you've got a good angle. He's going to be facing off against Muma here on the starting six against the Winston. So mobility and the Sombra coming in through here for the Outlaws with the Farah. Dante just going to be pushing up onto that high ground above the point for now. Pharmacy. Wrapping around. Should have a decent little angle here for Spree in a moment. Just trying to find NYXL. Right now, gonna be grouped up. In this little side room. Lock nice angle. Down. Yeah, gets a couple weaves in behind that Ryan shield. Trying to build that up. First cap's gonna be going the way of New York to start things off, though. It's just the worst case scenario for the Outlaws because they don't build much of an EMP with this, and the Ryan. Don't know. Gonna get picked off. Stepping out of the point, but the worst things they could have done, it would seem. Jonic taking down an to ball right after that. It's going to be one of the fastest flips we've had this season. Huge. Jake, push, Jake pushes forward, looking for some extra snipes. Huge mistake by the Excelsior to give up their fortified position there. I was leading into a point about how Muma's not going to be able to break through on Ryan versus the Winston, or sorry, excuse me, versus the, or with Winston versus the Ryan of Mono in that fortified spot, but they step out, they make themselves vulnerable to Spree, and Jake there, and now total control back to the Outlaws. They've got the EMP nearly ready as well. A well, Dragon Strike actually going to be taken away. Mecco denies that one with that D-Matrix. Fantastically done. Sort of one of those tools. Spree, however, still nearly to the barrage. Dante, 4% away from that EMP. Whip starts coming back through. No one contesting from the side of the Outlaws. Now start pushing their way in. The EMP going to be leading the charge in mono. Gonna be hitting the ground like a sack of bricks. Yeah. Nene swaps over to the McCree here because he's trying to deal with both the Sombra, which could be, of course, flashbanged if found, and this long range Fara. You can see Spree taking shots from Nene right now here, but he's got this nice angle where he can drop down behind the roof, then jump back up, take a few pot shots. He's already got that uh, ultimate online. And we'll see if he can find a good angle. Putting the flex and flex tank here, he's normally actually. Uh, on that flex tank, and Jake pulls up the far, but in this comp specifically, they swap it around. Back to the musical chair Zoe was talking about earlier. Yeah, extra aggression coming through. Sound barrier to lead the charge here for New York Excelsior. Now we're trying to open things. Still do have that transcendence, but the Houston Outlaws, they just pull back. They don't even give the shield an opportunity to be effective. Now the barrage comes in from Spree. He gets pocketed back up, stays alive. The barrage manages to take down Mono. Did not have a primal rage to try and survive that one. And even if he did, I don't know if he would have made it out with his life intact. Flip is there, though, for New York and Celsius. as they gain control of the point, but only at 25%. Primal Rage out from Muma. Gonna get a kill, goes dangerously low. Picks up that Mega Pack, and we'll have to try to rejoin into the rest of his squad. Spree, in the meantime, gonna get taken down by Nene. It seems like New York will be able to maintain control. Question is, do we see swaps here with both Jake and Spree dead? It looks like the answer will be yes. We'll see the Zarya come back through here. Jake will go over to Brigida. I know that's not everyone wants to see from the Outlaws, but it's the most reasonable thing to do here with New York Excelsior having such an ult lead. The EMP nearly ready here for Dante. That's their best tool to open this up. Remek comes through from Echo just in time. And finally has it. So destruct. No support ultimates for the Excelsior here. Holding on to that, push their way in onto the point. The Deadeye gonna be coming through from Nene, looking for a target. EMP comes in from Dante. Locus is the first one to fall. They follow up with two for one. Houston Outlaws trading their way back in. Nene gets a flashbang into the Dante. Manages to burn him down, but Jake is gonna be swinging away with the Brigida. The flip coming back in, 80% now advancing for the Houston Outlaws as they look to close things out. This is gonna be really tough for the Excelsior to close out now because they don't have a big tool like that EMP to open up the point with, right? They have, so, they have the... Primal Rage, they don't have Deadeye. Nene's actually gonna swap over to Zarya. They wanna win a longer fight here, build up those support ultimates. Easier said than done. Here's the tag coming through from Mono. Pushes their way in, Mono. Dangerously low, pushes away his way back around the corner. Jonek as well tagged up into that back line. Needs to stay safe. Primal Rage is gonna be coming up from Mono off screen. Shatter nearly there for Muma. Dante getting tagged. New York. On to the point, get the flip at 99%, Dante goes down. Houston Outlaws likely just gonna peel back, try to keep some members alive. Spree, however, gonna have to go off the side of the map, it would seem. Very well done here by the Excelsior, just tiptoeing in and onto the point to buy time. The stagger here is brutal. 
And now they've got both support ultimates. That was the win condition here, so it's tough for the Outlaws to break through this. They've got their own, but they're going to have to use them to approach the point, so the support ults are going to come out later for the Excelsior. They're Rally coming first. A, they're coming in with a baby Diva, so it's extra odd. Bomb into the back, Boom getting taken down. No chance to use the Earth Shatter now. Mono just going to be zapping away. Transcendence is out from Raucus. Houston Outlaws struggling to try to get the split back through. Graviton Surge comes in, locks him off the point. The bomb gonna be dropped in by Spree. Looking for a pickoff, but no one from New York gonna get caught. And now the OT will just tick down as NYXL takes round one. Very much a team that can identify win conditions, approach a point slowly, build that overtime, and set up for the support fight win there. In the end, NYXL, Tough times to start, but they finish out strong. And they do. Let's see if they can tie it up when we come back from the break in just a few. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. NYXL able to take Village and kick things off on Nepal. Now, two fan favorites here taking the stage. NYXL, though, leads the charge. We will have, this time, the mirror in Winston versus Winston here. No Orisa shenanigans, no Nene on the McCree or Sanctum. Just that mirror. Mono around the corner. Maybe caught off guard a little bit there. Has to jump out of the pit and rejoin with his squad. Mono. But he doesn't build up much as far as his ults. Yeah, concerned. not doing a ton of damage here, unfortunately, but they have positional advantage here. His way back in around the corner now is looking to make up for that. Spent time. Point going to be unlocked. New York, first one's a push over. The Diva and the Winston shifting to the side. Mooma now going to be matching. Leaping his way up. Mono going to be shifting back over. Cap still comes through for New York. Start taking this one away. Mumba still plays in on the point, getting contested by Mecco. They push him back, instant flip, 7%, all that they're going to gain. But this could just go straight back and forth, ping pong style. Oh man, the Excelsior are just so good at knowing how to touch the point. We'll dive into the back, 100 energy here for Dante. Raps on Surge going to be online, they lose out on Jake though. Dante's got 6 HP remaining and will be finished off, you would expect. But so gets a little bit more energy, <laughs> barely makes the match. Oh, Mono! Mono! No in his limits as he rejoins in. New York gets the flip back through. Uh, absolutely phenomenal plays from both the tanks. Tagging the point, tagging in and out, getting bubbles to basically maintain it for the beginning part there to get that, you know, slow, slow rise up for the Usain Outlaws, a little bit delayed, and then controlling space, coming around the back here, using that jump to do damage and escape at once. Great plays on the Winston here. Ravcon Surge going to be coming up, locking up the Houston Outlaws. Bomb into the backhand side, looking for a pickoff. We'll be able to find Dante, and that is just going to be the cleanup here. Houston Outlaws. They lose the Primal Rage, but otherwise just have to reset and get back in. It's just so clean what we're seeing here. The tanks always setting up these combos. <clears throat> They knew that Muma had the primal there. They were going to try to shut that down by locking him in place. They did exactly that. They knew that that was going to be the approach angle there. Dante does have this Graviton Surge online, but double support ultimates to counter means it's a big problem. And Muma pushing forward, looking to build that one up again. Sound barrier is out from Boink. Nama and Janik so far just going to be holding on to their ultimates. Oh, Mono going to be taken down right as the Primal Rage becomes available. Bomb in the back, looking for the big offs. Manages to get two. Anamo and Menko both going to be taken down. Houston Outlaws, they find their fight. They're going to be looking for a little bit of extra stagger as they get that point flipped. Janik uncharacteristically a little bit late on the Transcendence there. Means the point gets open here with that initial kill. And it's the follow-up self-destruct that guarantees it will go back into their favor. But when we talk about ultimates here, the upcoming Nene grab it's going to be what they're going to have to defend. Rockus needs to make sure he hits the trance on time. If he does a better, he has a better performance than Jonak just did. Use Atlas could certainly hold this for longer. Well, hard to say what the call was with that transcendence. But either way, Mono now going to be going forward with that primal rage built up. Muma as well, one of his own, ready to go. He's trying to get somebody outside to knock them off the ledge, but has not been able to find a target. Has to get out of there, but. Mecco hounds him down, finds a kill. Now Rock isn't Jake going to be taken down as well. Houston Outlaws 
barely going to be taking the lead here on the second round of Nepal, but NYXL should be gaining this camp back throw. And all hope is not lost for the Outlaws because they built up a few ultimates during that fight. We will see Rally come out from Jake in the longer fight on their next approach, as well as that grab we were just talking about. Jonak, 12% away from that trance, so the timing window there not as good as what they were looking for. But still, there's a great opportunity here. This fight basically decides the point. Have to try to engineer a victory here. Limited tools. The grab bomb combo nearly online. Mono pushing up. Early bubble there. Ground for a moment. Yeah, does not have that available. So they're going to have to just wait and pay, play slowly before that comes back up. If they had the bomb, I think maybe they pulled the trigger right there, but they did not have it. They still don't have it. They're going to have to try to find it here in overtime. Graviton Search going to be coming down. Locks up Dante. The bomb in the back. Rock is put a body block, but Dante gets burned down. Answering grab comes in. Bombs through. Jonic will be able to survive with his transcendence up. Ruba jumping in. He's trying to get rid of that enemy Zenyatta. Take those Discord orbs out of the fight. To get rid of some of that damage, honestly, because Jonic is such a DPS player. As you can see, the spree gets knocked out of the mech. Ruma finally kills him off, but Nene follows up for a kill onto the enemy Winston. The Houston Outlaws are struggling to get this flip to come through. Dante rejoining it with a Wrecking Ball. Sound Barrier going to be coming out from Boink as they desperately try to flip this, but Rockus has been picked off. It's just going to be the Lucio offering up some healing, and he does not play long. Nene gets the kill, and NYXL will take Nepal with a two. Zero. Nice knock off there. They had to finish it all off. NYXL looking very clean on our first map. Houston Outlaws, though, putting up a fight. This hasn't quite been enough yet. Control a very swingy type of map. Let's see what they can do when we come back from the break with Hybrid. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Alt economy is how many alts you have compared to how many alts the enemy team has. So a team would be said to have ultimate advantage if they have more ultimates available at that time. Alts basically win or lose you fights in Overwatch and a lot of alts in the game counter other alts. Say they have grav, you can let them use like grav and you won't use your transcendence because usually that's what you save it for. And then you'll come back into the fight with transcendence they won't have grav and you can use transcendence first and force out other ultimates to gain like a slight advantage. Usually teams will always commit ults to win fights. Then if you have the plan of baiting their ultimates and not committing any, you gain a huge advantage if you take a quick fight. And there you go. Some insights powered by Intel on ult economy. If you weren't sure what it was, now you know. Yeah, I mean, ult economy is a term we've been using back since the beginning of Overwatch, but very important in this meta in particular with things like Transcendence, Counter, and Grabs, as was brought up there by Rockus. 
Um, you know, it's super important to make sure that you're taking these fights efficiently, uh, which is basically to keep your ult economy high and make sure you use your ults one to trade for three, for example, be an ult efficient fight. Um, and that's something that in this meta is super valuable. If you can win a fight with only a rally, for example, and your opponent tries to fight you with three ultimates, then you're still just maintaining such a massive advantage. Yeah, so can be brutal. We haven't seen too much of that happening so far. It's been pretty even, even trades coming through as far as the ults are concerned. Does NYXL able to scrape by a little bit further than the Houston Outlaws get those wins coming in? But some really back and forth action there, especially on Sanctum, that last round of Nepal. And if that's what we're going to be seeing from Hybrid, from Escort, then man, this could be one heck of a series. We'll have to see how things develop, though. For now, NYXL going to be leading with a 1-0 Hollywood will be our next map. Though. It's already been Houston who leads in terms of different compositions, right? They forced the Excelsior to swap heroes, especially over to the McCree. That was the most notable for Nene there. So they've been leading that charge, right? But Hollywood's a map where you don't see a lot of diversity. It's either the 3-3 versus the 3-3 or the D.Va flexing over to the Sombra. So, I mean, in terms of that, uh, you know, we might see the Excelsior really pull ahead here. However, as I say that, we were, are going to see the Orisa variation here on the defense. Oh, never mind. Never mind. No. All right, so I was still right. <laughs> <laughs> In the end. <laughs> it's going to be going back to standard here. Libero showing Widowmaker for a moment. And yeah, not going to stick with it, you don't think. Just going to try to snag anyone who's poking out, especially the Zenyatta will try to grab some ult charge, poke out there, and then step back in. If you can get that opening kill, you can sometimes just take A off of that moment, so it's always worth, you know, looking for the shot. If you don't get it, you swap over right away. Nothing really lost here for the Excelsior as they push around. Really like the confidence from Mono, just now standing on top of the car with the Zarya bubble, saying like, go ahead, take some shots, treat Nene some charge. Yeah, he's totally in control of this high ground right now. The Houston Allies will have to take this back approach if they want to take control of it. They're actually going to drop down now because they have positional advantage. They maintain control of the cafe. The upstairs there, Mecco going dangerously low. They'll go ahead and peel back, keep themselves safe. And Amo getting tagged as well. Just pushing around this giant gate at the moment. No real commitments on either side yet. Mecco still pushing forward. Now, that's going to be the go button. Mono managed to find the opening kills. Jake is taken down. Now, Muma going to crumble under the pressure. And this should really just be A, going over to the New York Excelsior very rapidly. The time bank about to be massive. I feel like the New York Excelsior just have such a great understanding of how to back off when they're losing a fight. You mentioned Mecco being low. They step away. I lost my voice. <laughs> It's all right. They step away, recover, and then jump back in, get that first kill into Jake. Nicely done by New York to kick things off. Plenty of ultimates going to be building up here. Soundberry about to come online. Mono not quite to that. Earth Shadow get it with just a couple fire strikes, really. And with 450 on the clock, it's going to have to be one heck of a defense from the Houston Outlaws. Rally's going to be coming out from Olivero and Amo getting the melee hit there onto the right heart, put right, pushing right up into his face fearlessly. Takes him down now, Jake as well. Gonna be taken out. Boink, trying to replicate that. Does get Mono, boops him on the head. But the damage is done, the Houston Outlaws. Only dregs remaining as the card continues to advance for New York. Now, New York, we talked about ult economy earlier. They have nearly what we like to call the big six, meaning they have all six ultimates online. What they want to do around this choke is to use very minimal ultimates to hold on to those six, to hold on to those resources, so that when the Excelsior try to come around, they have to take multiple attempts and lose a lot of that four minute time bank. So that's the idea here. Probably going to be starting off with a Graviton Surge from Dante here, as there's no rally available to approach this cart. Grab grab be coming out. Yeah, opened up by New York. Bomb up into the air. Rock is going to be there with the Transcendence. Shield comes up. They managed to block that out. Pin goes through. On the mono, taking him inside. Meaning the shield's not there. The shadow comes down. It's huge. The sound barrier's up from an ammo. They try to keep everybody else alive. Spree goes back into the back of the rally. Still rolling for Jake. Trying to armor up everybody. No one's going to die, but New York Excelsior will at least push back for a moment. Yeah, when we talk about the ults, every, everything is used here. We're basically reset to zero. 30 seconds burned off the clock. Dante, though, getting closer to that next grab. Nene trying to catch up as he gets the kill on a Jake Spree going to be melted out of the Mac. A sliver remaining on that, and Jonah gets the headshot on to Boink. Now the Mech is going to be gone. That's going to be the continued push into B. 
As the effective sweep gets completed here, New York Excelsior, 438 on the clock for the final stretch. When you take the ultimates away and you go back to basic mechanics, it's Jonak who comes up with the big kills. Those are the moments where you shine as a star player in this meta when you're not trying to worry about transcendence timings or where the shatter is or what angle you're coming in at. When it's pure headshots, when it's pure mechanics, that's when Jonak, MVP of the inaugural season, comes up big and the Outlaws now suffer down on ultimates. They have the high ground. They need to utilize it correctly here with this grab. Well, we'll just be dropping down Dante. Not going to be playing up there. Knows that he's not really going to be building up much energy for this Zarya. That's the problem. Get that damage through. So pushes back down. Even then, the bubble's not leading to much. So around 10 energy just before we cut away. Point going to get picked off. Beko coming up with the kill. Offering up those rockets from above. Just peppering the members of the Outlaws. Pins in from Mono. Point blank on the movement. Takes him out. Spree loses the mech again. And this payload, it's barely been stopped this entire time. Sometimes when you're waiting for the perfect ult, you're waiting for the perfect charge. As Dante was there dropping down to get energy instead of grabbing, you miss your window, you miss your opportunity. This looks like a closeout here for the New York. Man, eh? Building up that energy. Graviton Surge still ready to go. Just needs to make sure it's not going to get denied. And it will not. Spree does not have the D-Matrix in time. Shatter comes down. The bomb they do it again. They get do it again. Beko, the effective five-man bomb comes through. And the Houston Outlaws are knocked out of the park. Grand slam for New York. I mean, we talked about Woo! it. Last time they played, we talked about it on the desk. We talked about it in the pre-show here. This combo, these two tank players, and really three with Nene, are absolutely killing it with these combos. And they do it once again to close it out. The bread and butter of NYXL coming up big. Outlaws, can they push back with their attack? We'll find out when we come back. And there they are. There's Mono. Should we take a look at Beko as well? Yeah, I, I mean, look, these two work together, and Nene started it all. So Nene is the one who gets the players into a position where Mono can hit the shatter, and that's when the explosion comes in after the trance is worn out. Remember, we talked about old economy. The countering transcendence comes out here from Raucus. Of course, he's trying to block this. Shatter comes through, though. Everyone's stunned. Trance doesn't stop you from getting crowd controlled, so everyone is stunned here. And all three of these end up coming together to make this perfect combination. The Transcendence isn't going to stop you from being burst, destroyed there. It only heals over time very quickly, but it's not instantaneous, right? So the explosion will kill. Of course, coming up next Thursday, Shock versus Spark. Should have watched that. Twitch, ESPN3, and Disney XD. Multiple platforms, whichever you prefer. Certainly check out that match, because uh, depending on how our final series of the night goes, that could be even more interesting, that matchup next week. Certainly true. We'll be able to see the shock. But first, let's go ahead and see how Houston Outlaws are going to be managing this attack. 319, the time to beat. I think, really, they're just going to be concerned with finishing Hollywood at this point, though. They're trying to take control of this high ground very aggressively, but it's not working out. No, it's not cost them a lot of charge now. Notice in this fight what the Excelsior is going to do. They're just going to chase and make sure everyone gets wiped. This means they maximize damage. And when you maximize damage, you build more ultimates. And suddenly that ult economy we've been talking about so much. Oh, no. We will see a stagger here. The ult economy we've been talking about so much already for the Excelsior on the first defense. And with defender's advantage, positional advantage, this is going to be a mountain to climb for the Outlaws. Their best bet here really is to try to do another push, which is what we like to call an eco push. So economic to build up ultimates and hope the Excelsior uses one of their ultimates defensively. Because when you come up this staircase here, you're not going to win this fight straight up. They're actually going to take the different approach. Nice response here by the Excelsior. Yeah, trying to go through the security room. Now just going to be pushing straight up through onto the point. And Angry there on the low ground. Grab comes out, locks up two. To the tanks, pin, takes boom away into the back. And makes him a very easy, isolated target for everyone else to collapse on and finish off. Now they got to chase forward. Let's get any additional kills. All this staggering. And all they send those death timers. Exactly. And all they were able to do is use force Nene to use his graviton surge. But otherwise, 
they didn't build enough of their ultimates for this next attack to have them. So it's going to have to be probably Spree going on the high ground to try to knock them off or try to beat them onto the low ground by taking the security room to the right, as you mentioned, as they head through. They push their way out. Okay, so they're going to be wrapping around the back side of the point into the cafe. Let's go through the gates here. Nama pushing up does spot them out. They have nearly both support ultimates ready to go. Boink just getting closer and closer to that sound barrier. Anamo going to be matching them as they both come online. This is the go moment. The point. This is it Outlaw. for Houston. Finally standing on it. A minute and 45 seconds remaining. Mono going forward. Gets his Arya bubble. Swinging away. Luma kites back around the corner. Shit, Adder comes down. Dante going to get locked up. The sound barrier will be able to save his life. But Neko takes away his Graviton Surge. Now it's going to be response straight into the face of Spree. Raucus, he's got the Transcendence up, but it's not going to be enough to save Spree's mech. Has to use the self-destruct in a disadvantageous position just to get back in. But now they lose out on Jake's. The Brigitte is not going to be the fight. And Anama pulls the trigger on the sound barrier. Still trying to take this one. Nene comes up with a double kill. Mecco will lose out on the mech. But that's about going to be the only casualty so far here for New York. You see the health bar so very low, but no one can kill off Jonek. No one can take down NY right now. And it was the late sound barrier from Anamo that is timed so perfectly to keep Nene alive. What's often hard to track for viewers at home is when the Graviton Surge is at high energy, that's when the Zarya is going to be doing the most damage. You can only see that when it's in first person view. Your best way to find that out is to look at the ult charge percentage for the Zarya and how quickly it's rising. Nene did the majority of the damage in that fight. He only lived because Anamo's sound barrier kept him alive. And now the Houston Outlaws running out of options, 40 seconds on the clock. And looking like a full hold here. Maybe not even a tick. We'll see if they can manage it. Either way, the time bank is going to be nowhere close to New York Excelsior's if they can get this map finished off. Jake going to be cornered. Shatter comes down. Mono just kills him with the ultimate straight up. Now Momo going to be taken down. Charge into the backside, looking for a target to pin. But there's really nobody. Half the team now more than that has already been taken down. Spree going to be eliminated and staggered here right at the end. Nama will scoop up that final kill with 10 seconds remaining. They are going to struggle to even touch this point to force out OT. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Muma's just too far away. Graviton Surge finds Boink. Muma's going to be taken down. And no, they cannot make it. New, New York Excelsior get the full hold here on Hollywood and move up 2-0. Fantastically done for them now at match point. Houston Outlaws need to engineer a reverse sweep, starting with Assault then escort, then force that fifth and final map for a tie break if they want to take this back-to-back -back series. They got Hangzhou, but New York may be a bridge too far. We'll see if they can do it when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. one for the NYXL, it's the Mecco Bomb picking up a big cleanup as it's a 2-0 start here for the NYXL over the Houston Outlaws. We got Bren, we've got Zoe, and Zoe, I want to start with you. New York XL, 3-0 match record. They're up 2-0 right now over the Houston Outlaws. Are they the best team in the Overwatch League? 
focused. It's hard to argue with stats, isn't it? I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, and that they should have been the champion last year. I'm pretty sure they're not going to drop the ball this year. I'll tell you what, though, Zoe, I do want to give the Houston fans a little bit of hope here, you know? So I'm going to be <laughs> treating you all to an insight powered by Intel. And just explaining a little bit, you know, how Houston, you know, managed to take an early lead a little bit in this control point that we saw in the first map. They didn't end up taking the map, but they did end up playing around and out compositioning basically the New York Excelsior and what they were running. I want to point your attention to the fact that they've got one tank and three damage dealers, and they've set up a sort of crossfire. I've highlighted Jake all the way over here. They've got more damage dealers on the other side. And what they're doing is they know that New York are going to be able to take this point early because they've got a big beefy lineup, a lot of heals, a lot of health, which means that they can take it early, but Houston, they're not worried. If we pause it again, you can see full control of the point here from New York, and you can see that the timer will be ticking up as well, but again, like I said, Houston, they're cool, calm, and collected. Mano cannot shield from two areas at once, and the Houston Outlaws, they know this. They knew this from their composition, what they were rolling out with, so they can just pump in this damage constantly, and that's how they end up taking the point early on away from New York Excelsior. And I want to lead this in as well by just saying, this is something that Houston Outlaws have been able to do quite consistently, and that's playing towards their strengths. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to in the second half and seeing if Houston can really just use that to take an edge over to New York Excelsior. And I think the coolest thing to take away from all of that is you're playing heroes that you don't normally play. Your opponent's never going to yeah. game plan for that. Clearly, Houston is putting in the effort prepping for the NYXL. But as the tape rolls, you guys can see NYXL, you can get fooled early on in the game, but this is a team that you have to play perfect against if you want to take the win. Yeah, I 100% agree with, with Zoe's point, you know. It, it, it's a little bit early to say that they might be the best team, but they're definitely up there in terms of the skill from, from across the board. This roster was fantastic in 2018. Coming into 2019 now, they really do look strong, and they've said themselves, you know, they are not going to be slipping up as often as they were in 2018. They're going to be taking it in completely seriously moving forward. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking forward to. We saw a lot of the players waking up in the span of this map. The second round oh, specifically so was all on this win. Look at Mato. He has been using those environmental kills to his advantage. Anima joined in also with those boobs and on Hollywood it was kind of the same story again. However, the man to look out for here is Jonak. He's oh, yeah. playing on Senyata. He's supposed to be a support player. He's supposed to heal his team up. And you know what? <laughs> He's been leading the damage charts for his team in the entirety of the map. He didn't die a single time and had the most frags at the end of the round. Gotta love the big bang combos here. Shatter set up the explosions. Mecco and Mono have been running it in the tank portion of this fight, but what are your other takeaways? If Houston's gonna get back in this, what do you guys wanna see in the second half? Zoe, let's start with you. Give me a player to watch. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes on Spree here. He's been doing a fantastic job last season when we saw him on Zarya. I'm really impressed with his D.Va play and the flexibility he's bringing to that team. So I can't wait to see more of him. Bren, are there anything that you see a weakness in Houston's game that they can fix in the second half? It is a case of essentially just kind of cleaning up a lot of their general team play. That's a very general answer, I know. <laughs> but New York Excelsior excel in their coordination when they're using their ultimates, their coordination when they're knowing where their teammates are. And Houston, generally speaking, have been pretty good in that regard in the past we saw in their match the other day. So we know that they're capable of it. I want to see them step it up for the second half. All right, I want to give a shout out to all the Outlaw fans. You guys have still been loud here in the Blizzard Arena. Give Houston your energy right now if you want to see the comeback. I know. I want another game five. We'll see if they can come out on top this time around. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Taking a look at the clip here just before the break. Jake clearly a bit out of sorts. I feel like a lot of people will look at this moment and say, wow, Jake really lost his cool there. But I think what the real takeaway here is that's the kind of raw uh, passion and emotion that's in a player who's been playing this game for a long time, who's prepared so much for this specific matchup. And it just feels like New York is one step ahead of them every step of the way. And, you know, that's that's a face and a, a fist slam of someone who's extremely passionate about, about what he does. And, yep. you know, maybe that energy he's got here is going to bring him back as we head into map three. Well, he's got a smile on his face. So quick to bounce back, it would seem, is Jake. So got to keep those spirits high. You don't want to get tilted. That's when things start really unraveling. Things have already not been good for the Outlaws at the start of this series. Down 0-2 at the moment need to get a reverse sweep if they want to be able to pick up a match victory and i mean we've only had what what the one reverse sweep i believe was our first yeah. series defiant uh able to pull that one off against the outlaws that's right so now they themselves need to do it uh so very tough position for them to be in but honestly even just taking a couple rounds here would be fantastic for them just to spare some blushes on the score line. I don't want to be a downer here, but we're looking at Anubis. They looked great there, but then they have to go to Route 66, a map they're nearly winless on career-wise. And this is mostly the same roster as we saw from last season with the exception of Dante joining, right? And they haven't really been looking good in game fives thus far. So if they're able to win this series and get the reverse sweep, it would be such a historic win for this organization. It all has to start here. Well, Temple of Anubis, talked about it earlier, was a fantastic map for them versus the Spark in their last series. But I don't think, given what we saw from the Spark today, I don't think the NYXL is going to be giving them that much of an allowance, that many free picks this time around. NYXL here having just such good control of space, knowing when to, you know, really hit that speed boost and go in. If they're losing the trades in terms of right clicks coming out from the Zarya, damage coming out from the opponent's Zenyatta, they back away, they heal up, they re-engage. All the while, Jonak is doing damage at range. That's why Jonak is really one of the key players on this team. It's not just because he gets the kills, but it's actually because he does that consistent damage output while the team is getting ready to press that go button. That lower third stat is just disgusting. I'll let you guys read it yourselves, but uh, truly impressive stuff from the NYXL. Now gonna be wrapping around. And right hand set, nice boop there from Boink. Tries to ship them back in the focus of the focus of the Houston Outlaws, but they couldn't quite get the damage in to pick anybody off. All right, see, this is what Excelsior does best. They see a, a trap set, they see a risk, they don't take it, they back away, go for a safer attack. Push their way up here, across the bridge. Spree getting a couple boops, trying to displace them, but they're so tight-knit, they're able to stay together as a solid unit. Now they go forward, get the sun there on the Muma, take him down, Spree's gonna be losing the mech. And with point gone, this is just gonna be point A going over to New York Excelsior. Just shy of seven minutes about to be in that time bank. We talk about worst case scenarios a lot here when a match is this one-sided, but New York Excelsior nearly have the big six online. Yep. So the double cap here feels almost inevitable. At least Rockus was able to do a massive amount of damage in that fight, so the Transcendence will be ready without that. This is for sure a double cap. So they've got one sh chance to shut this push down and stabilize, but it's not going to be easy. It's all on Rockus to hit that trance at the right time. Now that aura spree to deny away this Graviton Surge. Don't believe he's really gotten much taken away so far, whereas Mecco has been very on point tonight. Here's the go button. Pushing their way forward with a rally out from Libero Muma. Just gonna get shredded down. Absolutely rip him to bits. Transcendence out from Raucus, trying to keep everybody else alive, but now the grab comes in, locks up he and Jake. They will get taken down. Spree's gonna get knocked out of that mech. Doesn't get to use that self-destruct to get back in. And now New York Excelsior have the point to themselves. We'll start ticking this one up. Point trying to buy a little bit more time, but gets beamed down by Nene. It's a lose-lose situation for the Outlaws here. They didn't have the energy they needed. They had to trance. Can they even step up? No, they cannot. They had to use the Transcendence to save Muma. But if they did, it's a catch-22. Then the grab comes out afterwards and they do not have the answering heals. Very nice attack here for the Excelsior on A. They steamroll it into B. Yeah, 551 remaining. Record pace here for NYXL. Let's see if Houston Outlaws can bounce back.
Five minutes and 51 seconds established by NYXL here at the start of Temple of Anubis. And I mean, if history repeats itself, if we see a Hollywood situation again here, Wolf, it could just be one of the fastest series that we have ever seen in the Overwatch League, both in the inaugural and the 2019 season thus far. There's a full hold, another one. We'll just close it out. 3-0 victory for NY. So the second fastest attack on Anubis, a record currently hold, I believe, by the Vancouver Titans, just three seconds faster. And there was the delay we saw from the Excelsior here around this position that actually led them to get that set up, that attack, that come through, split the Outlaws up, win that fight without ultimates. We do see the Outlaws are going to pull out Dante's Tracer. This has been some, some of the things that Outlaws fans have been waiting for is a good Tracer player on Houston. It's Jake on the far. This combo's worked well for them before, but as soon as they see the defensive setup, they will just simply swap it away. Crucial time lost here for the Outlaws. I'm just letting the fans, give their, uh, the fans here in the studio give their opinion. Well, you know, you want your team to win right, they're going to have to play what's meta. That's very true. They need that positive energy. You gotta give them some cheers if you wanna see the Outlaws come up with a victory. There they go. There you go. And back in place. Dante gonna get chipped out a little bit, but so far Houston Outlaws, again, able to stay together like we saw from New York on this approach yeah. thus far. New York split up in several different angles here. They're gonna have to drop down from this high ground here, but look at the damage they Ooh. do while they do so. Mono controls this choke alone. He is literally alone with a bubble on him. He's also at the same time building energy for Nene while doing so. Great zoning here by the Excelsior. Well, now it's gonna be a pushover onto the bridge. He's looking for Raucous. Looking quite low now. The Primal Rage is going to be coming out. Oh, finds the isolation there. Onto the Zenyatta is going to be pushing forward. Sorry, a bubble. Helping to try to keep him alive, but now he finds himself in a corner with an angry scientist and will be taken down. Just like that. They have to reset and go again. This is really, I feel like, not the Outlaws losing this series, but rather the Excelsior absolutely winning it. I yes. mean, they are just ahead in every regard, and they are outplaying the maneuvers the Outlaws are running through with. And it's not even bad plays by the Outlaws, it's just super calculated defenses. The bubble mono there to hold the choke to build the ult there. And look at Nanny, he sits at 81%. He's pretty decently high on energy as well, you have to imagine. Look at this choke control once again from Mono. Now they're going to wrap around. He jumps up, and it all happens once again. Yep, he'll be ready to rejoin here on that mid ground. He can use his Down jump. away at them. For extra damage, there's the bubble. Jake slowly trying to build back up that HP. Mono goes right up onto the high ground to keep himself safe. Houston Outlaws, finally, getting a taste for the point. First tick's gonna be coming through. Just under two minutes remaining on the clock. Rock is managed to find Jonak. That's a massive pickoff here for Houston. Nearly to that second tick, moving their way up again. Will be coming through. New York Excelsior hit the go button, they drop down. And sentences down from Rock is trying to keep them alive. Point will be taken out, but he offered up the sound barrier for the remainder of his team before he died. To try to give them a leg to stand on. Primal Rage out from Mono again. Comes up with a kill on the Jake dropping back in. Now gonna be looking for Dante. Zaps his way away. Will be able to scoop up those kills. So two takes game. Houston Outlaws still very much a chance to try to get that completion on B, to try to get this completion first on A. They all that time bank up. They all stepped off the point two to chase the Outlaws with the exception of one hero who's rotating between Mono, Nene, and Anamo, who's making sure that the capture isn't done. So the team has split up. The Outlaws need to stick to the point to complete it. But Excelsior uses that, that you know, rotation in and out, kind of abuses that mechanic to win that trade. And Mono again controls the choke with the bubble on. This has been systematically repeated by this Winston player where he prevents anyone from coming in without taking massive damage, while also at the same time simultaneously building his ult and Nene's energy. It's an insane play by the Excelsior, and they just keep rotating around. And I love Jonak, you know, he's adapting. He's not sticking his head out there so Rockus can take it off again. He's trying to play in behind the shield of Libero. In onto the point, though. Nearly get the cap on to A. Echo going low, manages to boost his way back up to the top. Mono. Manages to get rid of Muma, so no main tank. Grab comes in, rocking him into the wall. Jake gonna be taken down. Rockus finds Jonak again, but with the loss of their main tank, it might not be enough. Grab comes in, the bomb has to be big. Manages to get it on, but Spree cannot make it back into the mech. Does it get rid of Nekos? But Neko goes back in, just gets rid of Boink with the pilot pistol. Muma rejoins to try to force out the OT. Will be able to do so, but it's just gonna tick down two ticks here on Temple of the Nubis. It's as good as it got. 
for the Houston Outlaws and NYXL will close out this series with a 3-0 escort still to be played. Systematic, it's terrifying what the NYXL are doing. They repeat, rinse and repeat the process and win the series. Fantastically done, Houston. Can they come up with a win on that final escort map to spare their flushes? We're just gonna have to wait and find out when we do come back from that break, but the pressure is on. See if they can pull it off. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Ladies and gentlemen, NYXL able to take the series. Still one more map to be played, of course. Have to go through Escort. Oh, that's a, that's a throwback sign that we had there in the audience. Boxes, the yeah. boxes from Contenders Korea. And oh, I mean, all the way back to the Apex days yep. as well, the final season there. A lot of great players coming from that team. Neko, uh, I think one of the big ones that people really remember. Sashin as well coming yep. up recently. So, I mean, when you go, if you want to go back and follow like some of these histories, there's a lot of teams that kind of are hidden gems if you want to watch old Overwatch VODs. You know, the Foxes are certainly one of them. I know the Hex was talking about Rogue yesterday. There's actually a, a rich history in Overwatch that you can, you know, go and check out in your leisure. Yeah, uh, that's, newer fans. That's one of those, like, late night rabbit holes that you can go down on YouTube. Yep. Lots of different VODs to go through, but uh, not much more to go through for this series. Just going to be Route 66. We'll try to close it out. Houston Outlaw is going to be trying to pick up a single map victory here. NYXL, I, we, you kind of mentioned it. Bren mentioned it before during the halftime. It, it doesn't even feel like Houston Outlaws are playing poorly. It's just that NYXL are just so far beyond yeah. them at the moment. That's what I was saying when I said that NYXL was winning more than Houston was losing it. We do have some substitutions here. Take a look. And we are going to see Ark. It's going to be Ark taken to the stage. That's right. So meditating at the moment. Yep, coming in here to imagine for Anamo that will be the case. And almost had a great game tonight. But this will be Ark's first time playing thus far here in stage one. So in his extra experience, we'll see if anyone else is coming through. It's been a while since we've seen Ark, you know? Yeah. Thinking back would be uh, World Cup in the Incheon stop. He's one of the more iconic players because of his uh, fluency in English as well. Yep. He's been in a lot of interviews, very outspoken player, but on uh, a lot of Monte Cristo shows, so. Great sense of humor as well on, yes. that, on that kid, so. Route 66 will be our final map. Houston Outlaws is trying to get one back, trying to make that map differential a little bit better. Spare some of those flushes, but New York Excelsior 
even with the sub of Arc, seeing him for the first time, seems like they're still playing this one seriously. They're going for the 4-0. Yeah, you know, this is the only way you go home together as the Outlaws tonight without a bad taste in your mouth, I think, is if you're able to take what I believe is their third map on Route 66, historically. It's been a lot of maps played for them, and it's just been, you know, they've missed the boat with it. As you can see, uh, the last two maps, they've barely died. So, I mean, this is what uh, this, this series has looked like. Unfortunately, it's a rough one for the Outlaws fans. But it's not poor performance from them, but it's New York Excelsior's extremely calculated style that has really been giving them trouble. Libero will once again start to look for a Zen pick, potentially, and then swap back over to the Brigida. Not going to find it. Mecco still on the Sombra, at least for now, but actually, OK. Might have been a missed translocator there. Not too certain what happened. It's, I mean, he's reasonably going to swap as well, potentially. A uh, <laughs> few extra seconds being handed over, I suppose, to the Houston Outlaws for their defense. Maybe we'll get a, a look at what the heck happened, because he is sticking with the Sombra. Yeah. Which his way into the back line. Going to find Raucus, has to translocate back instantly, so he gets tagged up. What's really cool about Libero swapping over to Widow, too, is he was just trying to hit those high ground members. Didn't get any kills, but it's when you're this close to spawn, it's a good idea. You could swap relatively easily. Spree going low. You know, they are finally going to start to make some ground here. Well, as you say that, though, Boink going to be taken down, Mane. Looking to open things with that first kill. Arc will get punished on exchange on the Lucios, but Dante is well going to be eliminated, and Amuma doesn't have enough backup here to stay alive. Will get taken down. The cart will finally start advancing if there was a very scrappy start to this round of Route 66. The outlaws delay a lot here. We're going to take a look at Mecco's death, no oh. doubt. Yep, missed And didn't throw it high enough. Figured. It happens to everybody. Yep. But talking about the Houston Outlaws, they stayed around that fight a lot uh, for a long time and built a lot of ultimates. Jake's actually still ahead in Brigida charge here because Libero swapped so many times. So they can actually take this fight if Dante can finish that EMP, that last 15%. This is a great way for them to hold A and take another minute off the clock. It's going to be the high ground wrap around here for the Houston Outlaws trying to match. Throw XL push up the ramp. Ramp down surge going to be thrown down. Just locking up Dante. Solo to get rid of him to try to get this completion onto A before the EMP can come through. This is what NYXL is so good at. They identify these win conditions. They say, what's the way that Houston opens this point? It's the Sombra. He spots him, insta single grabs him. And now they respond with an EMP of their own out from Mecco. Looking a lot better than at the start of this round. And the cleanup will come through. Effective team kill as Dante wasn't even able to get back. And that's the moment where you're, you're shaking your fist again to fear the Outlaws because they had every ultimate they needed to hold the push. But unfortunately, in some twist of fate, Nene finds Dante and solo grabs him. You almost never see that. But Nene's able to identify in a split second that EMP's their worst enemy in this scenario, and he shuts it down flawlessly. The respawn comes too late. Mecco then has his own EMP. It's brilliant play. Nene pushing his way back, waiting for an opportunity to build up that energy. Houston Outlaws will open things with that grab. A little bit late on the transcendence from Jonek. Unable to save Ark's life. Now Rock is going to be matching, pushing back forward as Mono gets taken down. Houston Outlaws gaining control of this choke. Ark actually is struggling to build that sound barrier throughout this game. He's died quite a few times already. He's three and two at the moment. I shake that rust off. Yeah, I got to shake the rust off for sure. Played a lot of mercy there at the end of Overwatch League as well. Oh, really aggressive push forward here from the Outlaws. This could come back to bite them in the rear. They can't exit safely. Seems like it's going to be a little bit of percentage handed over to New York, but otherwise unscathed. It's a nice retreat, and it gives Dante the time to build that EMP. So I like this. They basically just bought some time to delay NY's push. Now they have the tools they need to stop it. Well, that's going to be the EMP. Shatter comes in, locks up two, but Jake dangerously low here on the counter grab. Will get taken down now, Muma as well. Boink only able to find Mecco. Nene just picking up kill after kill. And we talked about Outlaws, they lose a choke point. Sure, and when we talked about Ark, you know, having the rust shaken off there, it's certainly no rust in terms of the counter somber play. He has the sound barrier right when he needed it there, was not clipped by the EMP, which would, of course, then prevent him from giving that counter barrier coming down. Even though Muma hits the shatter, both ultimates are denied by one. That's ult efficiency in a nutshell.
And that's a free push now looking to be as the Houston Outlaws don't have anything but this grab to assault the point with. And Mako nearly has the EMP 15 more percent ready to go. Looking for, looking for Jake. Looking on the movement. No, it's going to be opening up. Spray the left click there on a Jake. Trying to get some damage in. And Jonik will actually be the one to finish him off. You can Here clearly on the staircase, just taking some shots to the right clicks. Yeah. You can clearly see Jake was the target cold there. Now the grab comes out really late. Yeah, but Johnny on the spot is Jonik with that transcendence. Keeps him topped up. Sound barrier from point is not enough for them to survive. Houston Outlaws is going to get cleaned up here. Point going in for an extra little bit of delay. Trying to drain as much time as he can away from NYXL, but they're still up over three minutes as they enter the garage. And yeah, Ark is a, an old NYXL favorite, or rather, I mean, yes, he's still a favorite, but he hasn't really seen that much play in Stage 1, like at all. Um, but he's got yep. this pre-existing synergy with this roster. The communication has been good. Only Nene is really the new face here, and he has been charging up energy in, in conjunction with Mono's approaches. It's been, honestly, something of beauty here, what we're watching. Staying safe, Rock is nearly picked off there at the beginning. Raptor Surge is going to be coming through, locks up Dante by himself. Armor pack plus the bubbles as he tries to stay alive. Seems like he will be able to do so. Now the Shatter comes out. Susan Outlaws take the fight to NYXL. Fire Strike will take down Libero. Seems like that might be the only pickoff they can get unless they get some staggers here at the end. But either way, it's going to be another one fight for them as they can try to gain control over another choke. Uh, Rock has hit some huge bio grenades to build that incredibly fast. Without that nano boost, there's no way Dante holds that. So really well played here by the Outlaws. Finally stopping the train that is the New York Excelsior. They hold the high ground here. Now just trying to play around the corner, but that's going to be the push through. New York Excelsior just goes straight through them. Jake gets picked off the back of the rally. Shatter comes in. Rock is going to be locked down. Fire Strike will claim his life. Three members gone inside of Houston, looking for a little bit more. As they go for these staggers, Spree will get popped out. Boink gonna be taken down, and the cart will continue to roll. Almost every one of these fights, the call is clear to go on Jake. He's staying on the low ground, he's trying to stay back, but he's caught, discorded by Jonak, and he's the one who gets picked. New York Excelsior is punishing his forward positioning, and as a result, he's got quite a few deaths here. Now the high ground is taken from the Outlaws. Rally to try to take that away. Yep, grabs out Surge, gonna be locking up. Nene goes low, but the transcendence is just in time. They need to get rid of that shield. Nene will be taken down by the self-destruct. The rest of NYXL surviving on the back of the sound barrier. But they kite their way back. They push over towards the spawn. They know that they can't go forward without that Zarya. They're just playing it safe. A minute left. Finally, though, there's a real hope that the Outlaws can actually hold this. Nene's got the grab. Boink has the, you know, sound barrier to counter it. They also hold this high ground. No one, if someone gets picked here, though, NYXL will totally open it up. Nene's just going to try to get up here. 60 energy at the moment, not too much. Dante almost just going down right there. Nice retreat. Quiet low. Push around the side. Hart's still going to be oh, in G4, caught. Houston he's Outlaws, they're going to have to drop down. 30 seconds remaining, can they stop this? Grab comes in straight on a Muma's shield. Bob's up over the top, Muma going to be gone, nothing to block this one out. But Dante does have the bubble available. So manages to absorb that and get some nice energy, but is that going to be enough for them to drag back some kills and stop this card from rolling through? NYXL getting ready to approach OT with 13 seconds remaining on the clock. Rally is out from Libero, armoring up everybody that he can. Take on the side. And a half HP, not going to be in the transcendence. Joins back in though, Rockets will keep him topped up. OT getting ready to roll. Just going to be the transcendence here for Jonak. All that NYXL have to work with. There's a grab, there's a shatter, there's a rally out for the Houston Outlaws. He tries to go in for the shatter, but he gets stunned out of it. Mooma not going to find anything. Armor's still rolling through, however. Now the transcendence is going to be in from Jonak. Not going to have it. They try to heal through this grab without search. It comes out, locks up three members instantly on the card. All of them are going to be taken down. Houston Outlaws showing some signs of life here right in the final hour. They clean them up. The grab comes in. The transcendence is there. No one is on the card. Jonak is all alone. And they will be able to stop them from advancing all the way through Route 66. You called it out. The early trance comes back to bite the New York Excelsior. And Outlaws make the grab work from up on high. Still hope for a single map. Yep, just need to try to get that finish on the point. Let's see if they can do it when we come back from the break.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Houston Outlaws, if they can just get a full push here on Route 66, will be able to take a map victory against the NYXL, and deny them that much sought after 4-0. In terms of, you know, Brigida stats, Jake is only 200 points behind Libero, and that's very impressive given he had a rough start. And he is actually able to get multiple rallies here at the end, so he's hitting the proper armor targets. You called it out in this fight, you know, the Transcendence just not being available here because Jonak used it just a moment before is what gives Houston this victory. As the high ground is controlled, Spree did a ton of damage there as oh. well. Look at these NYXL strats though, Wolf. It's okay. gonna be the Arisa Bastion with the Widowmaker. Not so much a crossfire in this setup, but still gonna be looking for some success. Very, no pine, though, feels bad. Very greedy. We will see Jake swap over to the Genji, so that's always a treat to see. Just gonna avoid these fire strikes as they come through at range. Just enough time to transform and move. The scariest thing here for the Outlaws is going to be, and the hardest thing as well, is going to be closing the distance. Which, what do we go for? It's the musical chairs. But once they get on top of this Bastion, that's when they can destroy it. They're going to try to halt off. Nice yeah. positioning, though, not allowing the Bastion to come down. Problem is, the bubble doesn't last that long, nor does Jake, apparently. Stenic gets that shot, taking him down, now going to be looking. For the enemy supports, gets a body tag there onto Boink, but cannot quite kill him off. There's no diva on the side of the Excelsior, but with, you know, this barrier up here, it's very difficult for the Houston Outlaws to really oh. pull everybody down. Well, they're going for everything they can pull. They've got the, the Hulk hook combo ready to roll. Many gonna be dragged out. Jake gets a snipe. Coming back in, gets a little bit of revenge. Now it's gonna have to be the repositioning of the Bastion. Seems like it's just gonna be right on the corner, but Rockus is going around from the back. Gets the hook in. Ark's taken out, but they lose Jake and Boink. Yeah, Faster it's, respawns, though. It's a small victory here. And he's now just an old battery. All the damage done to him is gonna build further old. Speaking of which... That's gonna be Libero hooked in. Taking him lower and lower, but he needs a little bit of follow-up to try to finish him off. Into the corner. We'll be able to have it. Jonik's gonna be eliminated. With the loss of that Mercy, there's no chance of getting the res coming through. Houston Outlaws can finally start this card rolling through. Raucous getting these great hooks in. Yeah, Raucous at the moment, you know, 75. 75 hook accuracy. Just checking the stat on that one. We will see New York Excelsior swap everything but Mecco because they don't need a Diva to deal with this composition. They do need to build ultimates defensively here as they use this EMP. There is a way where they could contest A here because the push didn't actually come through quickly enough to deny them that. They have time to respawn. Look at Mecco's positioning. He's at the back. He's looking for that EMP onto the support line. Wink already preemptively Valkyrie. Jake so close. Dante as well. They're right next to each other. EMP's going to be coming in. It catches all six members of the Outlaws. Move out the first one targeted down. Jake just managed to answer back on the Jonak. Storm arrows. Oh, oh this could be a big one. Strike into the gas station. It's a double kill over to Jake. They get a triple in the end. The Houston Outlaws. Oh, man, they fight fire with fire. And they come out on top for A. They stabilize here. The probably swap heroes is this is the moment where you want to match ultimates with the New York Excelsior. You don't want to try this any further. You don't have the ults you need to utilize the Hanzo there. That was a lucky moment. Everything fell into place for the Outlaws as Jake gets an arrow straight into the building. And what do we say about positive energy for these guys if you want them to win, huh? There you go. <laughs> it's not over yet, though. No, it is not, but it's a good start for the Houston Outlaws. Over three minutes for the streets phase. Push forward from NYXL, looking to go aggro. Mono managed to take down Jake. With the help of that rally, just armoring up everyone. Muma gonna be hitting the ground. Also eliminated. Nice, clean push forward for NYXL to gain control. Now, this is the drawback of strategies like what the, the Outlaws used. Now, Excelsior has ult advantage because they held these heroes longer, right? The, uh, you know, the... Um, Ryan Zarya. They swapped faster. They won this fight. Now they have control of this choke with ultimates that excel in moments like that. The grab, the EMP. Sleep on the Nene. Bomb up over the top. Can that finish him off? He's not going to stand up in time. They get rid of the Zarya. They get rid of the Lucio. Typically, Monte Cristo says, don't open a fight with a bomb, but when he got the sleep dart to set up onto the Zarya, I think it's pretty acceptable. And it's also an exception to the rule here because he they didn't expect his angle to come through yeah. like that because they were so far forward. 
So he just sees this opportunity. He's going to blindside them with this explosion, and the push continues. It's a decent time bank here for the Outlaws, and they have certainly made up for lost time in terms of those ultimates they were missing in that previous fight. Going out the bio nade to try to force them back. It's going to be the Nano in on Damuma, swinging away. Looking for the hit, looking for the pin. Oh, no, just going to be pooping the Reinhardt up into the air, so cannot quite get that kill. Shatter, however, still going to be online. Graviton Surge comes in. Counter grab out from the side. Rhino gets a fire strike here, trying to build up. Houston Outlaws continue to inch the card forward. A minute and 40 remaining. Would have a very nice time bank if they can get this finish right here. High ground here for Dante is absolutely massive. He's doing a lot of damage. He does get forced off by Arc, though. Still high energy. He's the one doing most of the damage. And he is, but Muma goes inside, gets taken down. The back end of Jake being eliminated, 100 energy, but he's just looking for something, pushes forward to try to get rid of Jonek, but the bubble comes in from Nene. And, you know, we talk about him being on the high ground and being high energy, but in that moment, New York Excelsior realizes, well, if I stick near him, he's going to do high damage, area of effect damage to our entire squad, so we'll hit the rest of the team that's on the low ground, claps on them, win that 6v5 fight, and then suddenly Dante's on the high ground alone. Very well played. 61% of an EMP here from Echo. That EMP may be what makes this a 4-0 series. The Outlaws need to be careful, need to play around it. They don't have Transcendence with no Zenyatta. The wraparound onto the cart, inch it forward even closer, just a couple meters away. Jonic right now unhindered in the back line. I'm gonna say in behind Libero. Spamming away nearly with the Transcendence up. Boink, gonna get taken down, Mecco kills him off. That's gonna be the sound barrier gone. Now Jake eliminated Muma. Gonna be cleaned up. One more realistic push for the Outlaws to try to finish here on the B. Count them though. Arc, Jonak, Nene, Mono, Libero, and Mecco. Six ultimates. Can the Outlaws break the records here? Can they win on their worst map? I mean, for the Outlaws, it's like trying to play Russian Roulette with six bullets. All cards stacked against them. Boink's sound barrier has to be there if he gets hit. This map is over. Pushing their way in. Here comes the EMP. OT getting ready to tick down. The shield has to come on the back of the EMP to try to keep them alive. Grab top search, gonna be locking them into the wall. The EMP now dumped in. They need the shield, they need it right now. It comes in right in time for the shatter, but they still have the damage to take down Moma. Hack is out on the Jake. He's swinging away like a bad man. Just trying to stay alive, but it's not gonna be enough. Mono's hammer is bigger than Jake's mace. Bomb out from Spreak, it's nothing. He'll be denied the remake. Raucus is gone. They will clean them up. It's not a full hold like we saw on Assault on Hollywood, but NYXL still look clean in the finish. A 4-0 victory over the Houston Outlaws. They may have gotten the sound barrier to block the EMP, but there's a follow-up shadow. There's a follow-up grab. There's just too many ultimates, too efficient. Were the Excelsior there on the defense? Mono and Mecco, this tank duo continues to just absolutely decimate whatever team they run into. It's very systematic to see how they control the choke points with those ultimates, with Mono on the Winston. Bubbles coming through. High energy Zarya from Nene. If you're an Outlaws fan, don't be disappointed with your team, but be terrified of the New York Excelsior. Well, fantastically done from them. Outlaws, I think they're still a lot to be to feel good about here despite the score reading otherwise. They did show some very strong moments here. NYXL, just a very tough opponent for them to try and take down. We've seen improvements from the squad already. With a bit more time, I think that they are going to be able to uh, kind of show some better results here as we go deeper into stage one, into this, the entire year overall for 2019 season. Certainly, you know, the Outlaws have shown us so much so much diversity and strategy, and I think that their synergy is clearly there. It's just gonna be a little bit more ironing out the wrinkles. Yep, we'll see how they piece things together when we look at them for their next series next week. But guys, let's go ahead and throw down to Danny Lim on the floor who is standing by with a certain tank duo. Thank you guys so much. I am here with Mecco and Mono from NYXL. Please, Arena, make some noise. Now, Meko Mano, you guys are showing off some amazing synergy. Your combos, your Ryan and your Diva combos are, I would say, top notch. Like, how are you guys able to keep this, uh, you know, pull off these combos so perfectly, so precisely? Uh,
So in, in any given situation, in game, I feel like we just kind of get it. We just kind of know what each other are thinking, and that's how we're able to pull off these amazing combos. All right, cool, thank you. Next question, this one is for Mekko. Um, you know, NYXL currently is the only team that has four... Me oh, Mano, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so sorry. Mano. And you guys are the only team that has the 4-0 victory right now. Um, basically, how are you guys able to just play so consistently and so good? Oh... 모든 선수가 열심히 하고 잘하는 것도 있겠지만 이제 안 보이는 곳에서 코치님들이랑 스태프분들이 그 밤낮 안 가리고 열심히 하는 게큰 도움이 되는 것 같아요. It's, I feel like uh, the players are also uh, always giving their best, but also behind the scenes there's the staff co staffs and the coaches that are uh, working day and night consistently for our team, and that's why we're able to be so good. All right, thank you guys. That was it from me. Let's head back to the casters. Thank you very much, Danny. There you have it, the foundation, the bread and butter of NYXL. Those Wombo combos coming through time and time again, they're able to deliver on them. Yeah, really impressive stuff. You have to also give them uh, credit for saying the coaching staff and the strategies they prepared is kind of, that's the things you can't see is basically how yep. we worded it is. Actually, it's not just us, but it's the staff that's pr helped us prepare for these sorts of moments. I mean, it's crazy too that when you look at NYXL in terms of their previous metas, right? They excelled in stages one, two, three, but when they hit a roadblock in stage four, they struggled. Now we're in a completely different meta yeah. and they've clearly prepared well. Given enough time, they're starting out as one of our best teams. Yeah, need to see how that adaptation is gonna come through though as we advance through, but for now, look fantastic. Let's go ahead and figure out who our player of the match is, guys. Pre pre presented, I can talk, by Omen, by HP, and it is gonna be Mono. This guy, fantastic series again. Threading the needle onto this ledge. Yeah, just barely Ooh. makes it back there, knowing exactly how far he can go. Very Miro-esque, in a sense. One of our more famous Winston players. If you look back at Overwatch history. Yeah. Another setup here for the Shatter. Nene leads into it. Angle here is good. He gets all the support from, you know, mostly actually Libero here and Nene, the bubble and the armor packs. And that's what allows him to go places as Reinhardt that you're not really supposed to be able to get to. You're not really supposed to be able to walk to the side of a team and hit that shatter. I mean, you can see right there, 16 Earth Shatter stuns on Reinhardt in this match. Only four of them did not lead directly into kills. 12 out of 16 is a pretty good number there. And that's and, with uh, a short match time as well. Yeah, these rounds did not last very long aside from Route 66 there at the end. So really fantastically done by him, by the rest of the squad. We'll take a look at the standings. NYXL very much out in front at the moment with force, you know, four zero, much like we saw from their scoreline here. And at the same time, Titans, Eternal, and Rain, uh, you know, really close to catching up here. High indication points as well with their map differential. And with a few more wins here, this top four looks incredible. Even the Dynasty had on their hot on their heels. They are, they are hot on their heels. Titan's gonna be looking for that 3-0 here at the end of the day for our final matchup. We'll see if they're gonna be able to grab that. But uh, we still have one more series in between that happens. We're gonna be having the LA Valiant coming up on stage, going up against the Toronto Defiant. Thanks to all of our viewers on Disney XD. If you wanna stay tuned in, make sure you flip over to twitch.tv slash Overwatch League. We'll see you next time otherwise. Guys, stay tuned. Defiant versus Valiant in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.